fix a lot here. I'm going to be changing out the motor mounts on a 2005 997S. You can see that they're, uh, the exhausts, when you look left to right, the right side is drooping a little bit. Uh, motor mount is going bad on that side. Uh, car has over 125,000 miles on it. So it's time to change that as well as the transmission mount. So I'm going to be changing the transmission mount as I mentioned. This is a uh, stock Porsche part. I'll show you the AGA tool that I use to basically remove this from the uh, transmission. I'm um, going to change to the Weevo mounts. I've made a video on this before so I'll go through it relatively quickly. Um, 13 millimeter nuts up here are torqued at 18 pound feet and then the bottom one is torqued at 60. Um, then going to be using the uh, Motul uh, 7590 gear oil and I'll show you how to change that also. Okay first we start out with the tools just need a screwdriver 13 millimeter ratchet for the top of the motor mount 18 millimeter deep for the bottom of the motor mount. First you got to remove the air box so we've got to take this out And there's just a couple connections here. One is um, for the uh, mass, uh, it's because of the air meter. Anyway, this one comes out relatively easy. On the back side, you just squeeze it until you hear a snap like that, and then just wiggle it out. Then you've got a center connection here, which needs to be released, so you can release it here. And then this unit here is just a squeeze plug. You just, you just push on this and then pull up and it comes out. Um, and then the hose for the oil filter comes away. Um, this should pull away as you move the entire unit. plus a little hose back here that you disconnect. So it looks like a J, but you just kind of pull that out. It's at the bottom of this connector here. And then the whole unit should rotate out. Oh, there's one other wire connector back here. Uh, it's just a bridge basically to hold this cable but anyway that's how you rotate it up and then you'll have full access to the engine mount on this side as well as that side okay I'm underneath the car I've put it up on all four corners so I've jacked it up uh, evenly uh, so that I can fit underneath the car I apologize for the handheld here but uh, there's just not enough room to get a tripod down here. Okay, so this is the uh, engine oil sump here. Just behind it, there's a kind of like a platform where the cases come together. And I'm putting a jack with a block right underneath there. I'm not touching the oil pan, but it's just right behind it. And what you want to do is you just want to get it so that it is, you know, the engine is basically snug. Um, the engine supported in the back here by a mustache bar. So this is a mustache bar going all the way across and it has two points where it connects um, you know, to the engine mounts right on, on each corner. Uh, and they have a square kind of top to them. And so you'll see on the engine mount as well as on the Weevil mount, there's also a square uh, base and then that locks into the top of the mustache bar. Um, the mustache bar then kind of follow it, it connects like, I don't know if you could see it, but right up here, there is a, um, right up here, there's like an 18 millimeter nut. And so that's what's going to come off. Um, so since you have the mustache bar snugged up there, it won't move. You take that off and then you take off the 13 millimeter, two 13 millimeter bolts up on top and then pull the engine mount 
straight up. Okay, the 18 millimeter nut looks like this. It's washerless. So again, this gets, once you put the Wevo mount in, this gets torqued up to 60 pound feet. You remove the 13 millimeters, there's two of them up here, and then just go ahead and pull out the motor mount. I don't know if you can see this, but there is a square, rectangular looking um, piece at the very top of the motor mount, and that interfaces with this square piece right here. Um, it's, it's at the top of the mustache bar, and then here's the motor mount, and they, they interface together. So the motor mounts are the same on left and right. Um, they are the same with the Weavos. And so you'll want to orient these such that, again, the square here fits right in with mount like that. Put in your 13 millimeters and then torque up the uh, bottom uh, uh, 18 millimeter. And then you should be done. Um, do that for both sides. Hey guys, this is just an assembly tip. This is inside the engine compartment. You can kind of see this unit right here. Um, this is like a rubber guide for the base of your air box. There's two of them. There's one here and there's one over there. Make sure you have those in place. If you don't, um, you know, go out and buy one of these, or two of them, because um, it helps your um, air box from rattling around when you put it back in. Okay guys, I hope you can see that uh, once the Wevo mounts are in, or if you put in the stock motor mounts, um, things are a lot better. Uh, the right side is a lot more even than the left, and I'm sure this is going to improve uh, shifting. I'm going to be moving into changing the transmission fluid as well as the front transmission mount. It is important to uh, change that front transmission mount if you're doing a clutch or you know if your car has a lot of miles on it like this one does. Next is the forward transmission mount change. You're going to have to bring the car up uh, on off of all four wheels as noted here enough room for you to get underneath to work on it. Then uh, we're going to move on to changing the, the transmission mount here. That's this one. And it's um, the bottom shields are basically fastened together with either a T25 um, torque screw or a 10 millimeter plastic nut. The way these are set up, let me show you, I've actually removed the panels already, but uh, I don't know if you can kind of see this, but there's a panel farthest back here, which is, this is mostly attached by uh, the T25 torque screws. This is the farthest one back. Next one forward is um, attached by the 10 millimeter nuts. And then what I did for the center and the left side or driver's side one. The center one is the one that has to come out uh, in order to reach the transmission mount um, along with this furthest back one. Um, but in order to get this one out, you gotta remove at least one of the side uh, ones. So I removed the driver's side and then once you remove this, this one pops right out. tool we're going to use is this AGA tool right here. Dave of East Hampton, New York, he's on Renless. He allowed me to rent this uh, from him uh, for one week rental. So Dave, this is a plug. Do not get rid of the AGA tool. I think others are going to be inquiring about this. All right, as far as changing, um, the, sorry for the handheld again, but the uh, Transmission mount is a three-piece unit. So there's this side here, the other side there. So these two sides here 
Um, those have to unbolt. There's just four bolts uh, total for those. Um, well, they're actually nuts. Um, but anyway, the back piece here, where the mount actually is, it's two through bolts. Um, but you've got to remove this, um, after you remove the nuts and everything, you got to remove the bracketry. So this bracket over here is just bolted up with uh, one nut at the top and that can be undone and then pushed to the side. Um, and then you take off the other side um, and then use the AGA tool in order to extract the um, mount. And I'll show you where that is kind of halfway through. I've put a jack underneath the transmission and you want to lift it so that these screws here they push out easily like that. When you have it in that neutral position that's when you remove the forward braces, these two, and then this cradle piece here will you unbolt that and then you kind of push swing it forward and then kind of tie it up here with some tape or something like that so that you have full access to the uh, transmission mount here. There's a small electrical bracket on this bridge unit and I know I said there were three pieces it's actually just two. There's just this one and this one here. Um, as far as the forward, uh, the transmission mount. Um, but anyway, you can push this out of the way so that you have access to the transmission mount. And there's a good chance for you to check your, your radiator hoses, make sure everything's okay down here, your cables, shifter cables and all. Uh, make sure they're all in good shape before you go ahead and reassemble. Just remember on the uh, reassembly that the uh, forward bracket goes on the inside of, of this um, bridge bracket that goes over the uh, transmission. Um, mount everything relatively loosely and make sure you get the two bolts in here and, and then move, move forward. You can kind of see by the orientation here that um, this the aluminum piece looks like an egg and basically the top of the egg is up here and it uh, you have to make sure that these two holes are aligned vertically when you install the new unit. The bridge bracket as well as the forward bracket for the transmission mount those are all 15 millimeter um, and you're gonna have to use like almost like a, a ratcheting breaker bar in order to get the forward ones out uh, they are pretty tough. Um, this is the AGA tool kind of halfway through its process of extracting. It goes from the passenger side out to the driver's side and then when inputting it comes back the other way. It goes from the driver's side back in to the passenger side. So you just basically reverse the tool around. Um, you just have to make sure that this tool is centered within um, the opening here so that it actually has, so you're not pushing against the transmission. You're just pushing against the um, mount that's in the center. Um, and it helps to use two ratchets on both sides here. I've got kind of a box-ended ratchet here and then a regular ratchet, 13 millimeters on this side. Um, it is 17 millimeters on this side, but these are self-held. So 13 millimeters, double ratchet. Turn those both at the same time and it kind of helps to push them through together rather than alternating it back and forth. Um, I would say that's the best way to go. As one thing to note, the um, passenger side is tapered here, and so that's the only way that the transmission mount will be able to go in. If you try to pull it in from the other side, from the passenger side, it'll basically come in crooked because the um, tool doesn't sit flat on this, um, on this surface, so it can't pull it straight through it'll pull it through at an angle and so therefore you have to go against what the instructions say uh, at least this is on a 2005 and come in from the passenger side when you install uh, and pull it through to the driver's side.
just a note. Here's the mount halfway installed. Again, this is coming in from the passenger side which had the taper on the transmission um, versus coming in from the driver's side as the instructions have told you to do. Um, the factory mount does not have a taper on, you know, uh, a serious taper on e either side. So you go with the taper that's on the yoke of the transmission um, and go in from that side and it'll pull through. And you check that the bolts are vertical by using a, a level, like I used a bubble level, in order to make sure that they are vertical. All right, in the final stages here, you're going to want to um, make sure that the um, forward mount for the transmission is installed loosely. Again, it goes inside of this bridge bracket that goes over the transmission. So anyway, it's mounted inside here. Line up the bolts and slide them through. Put them in finger tight. Again, everything here as well as this bracket here should be loose when putting it all together and then go ahead and tighten it up after that. Um, I think these 15 millimeter bolts I got them to about 60 pound feet. Um, and you can do the same with these guys here, the 15 millimeters. Um, and then go ahead and install the um, under trays from the front going backwards and you should be good to go.